Church, welcome to another week of online church while we're all here on lockdown in Sydney. I hope you're all doing well. I'm missing seeing your faces, but I hope that you're staying safe and staying sane while we're all stuck at home. To show you a little bit of what our youth are doing for our welcome this morning, I asked some of our youth members to send through some videos to show all of us how they are staying COVID sane at home. I hope you enjoy. 
Hello, it's me, Damien. So, good to see you guys. Um, and Jess has asked me to show you some of the stuff I've been doing over the last few weeks in lockdown. So, starting with project number one. Woohoo, it's a bed, I made a bed. So, I bought some wood and I made a custom bed. So it's a nice height, it has this very vibrant orange paneling at the back and a bit more over here, the bottom. So that was good fun. Um, what else did I do? I made a sewing project. So I've made this lovely felt map to place, play board games on. And speaking of board games, I have constructed an entire board game from files from the internet. So I've made some lovely 3D printed ships, some lovely cards, and a box for it all to sit in. So that was good fun too. As of today, I start uni again. So, yesterday, Dad and I made a desk. So, found a piece of wood on the throw out, of course, and it's been working well. So, hello church, hope you're doing well, and I'll see you later, bye. Hi church family. Um, recently I went back to school and now I'm doing online learning, um, which can be a little bit of a challenge, but I'm so lucky to have my two dogs who keep me company all day. <laughs> They just sleep and keep me company. It makes me feel a little bit less lonely. I like to keep in contact with my friends all day too, to keep those connections going. Hi, Castle Church family. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Janet Shin and I'm one of the youth here at Castle Hill Church. Um, so during lockdown, I have been taking up a lot of golf. Um, it's been really fun and I've been improving heaps. It has still stayed open, so I've been able to play a lot, um, especially during my uni break. Um, they have reduced it to two people um, on the course at one time. Um, so that means that the spots fill up pretty quickly, but luckily I've been able to get those spots in and get in those um, rounds, which has been really good. Um, so yeah, come with me and I'll show you how I play a hole um, on the golf course. So yeah, that's the hole. Um, hope you also have a chance to have lots of exercise and enjoy the sun. And um, can't wait to meet you all again once COVID lockdown and COVID restrictions ease. Um, in the meantime, bye. Now let's watch the party do it. Hey church, during lockdown I've decided to learn a new language to keep myself busy. So for the last couple of weeks I've been doing some online Arabic lessons and today I just wanted to show you what that looks like. I've been using a website called Duolingo and each module begins with a short lesson which either covers new vocabulary or teaches you how to read the script. Each individual letter can have a different shape depending on whether it's found at the start, middle or end of a word and this can make learning Arabic pretty tricky. But eventually, when you learn the alphabet, you can start to read words such as in the following slide. Doctora Francia Minberis. I hope you've enjoyed this short presentation and seeing what I've been up to. And I strongly encourage you to pick up a language during lockdown as well. Hi, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well during this time in lockdown. I miss going to church and seeing everyone's face um, and just so it's just aspect of all. What's keeping me sane during this lockdown is taking my dogs for walks, as you can see. And yeah, I hope to see everyone very soon. Bye for now. Hey everybody, 
um, we had 85,000 tests uh, uh, good morning, to 8pm last night. Um, to 8pm last night, we had more than 98,000 people come forward uh, to 8pm last night. Not only is that close to 8,000 tests, but on the weekend. Day 32 of lockdown. There's protests in the street, there's looting everywhere. Someone keeps taking my milk. Food is running low, tensions are running high. Hey, you're meant to be talking about what's keeping you sane. So I've been working from home mainly. It's been a bit of a challenge getting used to online learning and remote support, but I'm getting there. A bunch of my friends and I, we all get on and watch the 11 a.m. press conference every morning. We call it Press Fest 2021. Other than that, I'm just waiting for it to blow over.
Hi Church, good morning, happy Sabbath. I hope you're all enjoying the church service. I need to be absolutely truthful with you. I miss church, I miss us gathering together, worshipping, singing, praying, just mixing with you all. I really, really miss you and I pray that you're well, that you're looking after each other. I do have something I want to put to you. We have a family that I'm helping and they're desperate for a computer or two. They have children, but they only have one computer between four of their children. And uh, I'm trying to fundraise so that I can get them a couple of couple of computers. So please give generously, make contact with me via email, text me, call me, and we'll make this happen. We'll make it a reality for this family. I hope to see you soon and also, uh, this afternoon, don't forget, we have, uh, we're closing Sabbath together. So zoom in. We're going to have a Kahoot time doing a Bible quiz. And uh, we have Scott Wegener, uh, Paulo Lorero and Marvin Malcolm leading out. I look forward to seeing you this afternoon. We started at 3.30 where people can just connect together and mix and get to know each other and catch up. And then at four o'clock we start officially. God, God bless you. We'll see you soon. There's a saying that at all times preach the gospel uh, when necessary, use words. And the Logan slogan is um, caring, helping and supporting. Logan's a phenomenal place when it comes to need for community. There is so much hurt, there's so much pain in this world. And what have we got to offer? And to be able to offer some really beautiful things that, that God has done for us is just, to me, is, is beyond um, everyday thinking. If people really realise what type of dramas and some things that people have gone through in their life, I used to be very judgmental. Once you hear the people's story, I say to myself, if I had that experience, where would I have been in my life? I've been here now nearly nine years. Until I started working here, I didn't realise how many people out there are going without their meals. And if anybody ever comes in here and says that they're hungry, we will do our utmost to try and give them something, you know, even if it's just a loaf of bread. And I think without Adra here, Logan would be in a terrible position. I've had men, grown men, come into my office and they're broken people, you know, partners who have um, beaten them or they've had issues where uh, they've been thrown out of home and, and they've lost everything. They've lost their work, they've lost their family, their kids and so forth. And, and they are just smashed men, you know. And to sit with them with, at my desk and to talk with them and just to try and instill a little bit of hope into their lives, that's special. And that's something you cannot get anywhere else. Logan actually has 217 ethnic communities, so the whole world is here. I haven't been able to study until I met Adra. Now they're helping me to get into a course, which is like the best thing I could do. Once I was at the supermarket at Marsden and this lady came up to me and gave me a big hug, which sort of like threw me. And then she told me that her daughter had came in and spoke to me and her daughter was contemplating suicide and her daughter didn't do suicide because she came in here and was speaking to us. You've got to have multiple ways to reach people. You know, so it's not just one size fits all. So what are the mediums that people are, are utilising to, to hear stories? And I think signs is a, a, a valuable one for us as well. It is very important to have a magazine that actually deals with felt needs Things that are not always um, overtly spiritual, but maybe under, under the surface, they've got spiritual longings and desires. We were gifted a stand by the signs that sits in, the front, in our front reception area. We have two areas, one's at the op shop and one's in the main reception. And we found that to be the best place because whilst they're waiting for their food to be prepared or their information to be processed, they just reach over and they grab a magazine and they start flicking through it and they, they, they have a look at the pictures or start looking at topics and then they hold on to them. And that's how they disappear and they just, they hang on to them. When we have two or 300 people, um, yeah, up to five or 600 people coming through our doors on a weekly basis, they're guaranteed they're gonna be picked up and moved uh, and taken. I actually have taken a couple home for my husband who's he's not religious at all or a Christian of any kind, but he's actually read some of them. Quite often I see the staff reading them and that, and clients take them home all the time, so 
it's, it's a need in the community. I think the science uh, resonates with people because it, because of its relevance in, in life. You know, and we're doing life with people here. That's that's all we're trying to do. And I just pray every time I get a box of magazines, wherever they go, Lord, you send them to what they need, where they need it. How else do you get good information that is uh, credible, that is trustworthy? So I say go hard because it's just um, something that, that our community needs. If you can't get out there and rub shoulders with somebody, then you can invest in, in a medium that actually does that for you. We find it valuable here, which is why we have it. Um, we would love to keep having it here, uh, but obviously, you know, as a charity, we have to find a way to, to fund that. And if you're, you're sort of thinking, oh, I don't know, should I do this? Is it really going to reach the people I need it to reach? It certainly does. And, um, you know, we'd love to continue to have signs here um, as long as we're in operation. And now it's time for our offering. The offering today is for the local church. It stays at Castle Hill. We need your offering. We need your tithes. The offering is to help us to do our work, to minister to those in our community, to keep our production going, and uh, to be ready to help anybody that is in need in our community, in our own church. Please give generously, go to e-giving. Let's pray for this offering together. Dear Lord, we're just so grateful that uh, during this lockdown, during this difficult time in life, that you still give us more than we ever deserve. And we seek your presence in our lives. We seek for you to challenge us, inspire us, move us and uh, help us to just honour you with all that we have. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey kids, happy Sabbath. I want to ask you something. Do any of you ever worry? Do you feel stressed, alone, scared? Well, today I want to tell you the story of a little boy named Trevor. Trevor was just a regular kid. He went to school, he had a lot of friends, he liked to play sport, and he was just happy. And that is until one day his mum got really sick and Trevor got really worried. He was worried what was going to happen to his mum. He felt scared and alone and his mum noticed this. So one afternoon she sat down with him and told him a story. A Bible story actually and the story can be found in Matthew chapter 6 verses 25 to 34 and you can read the story with your parents after church. Trevor's mom told him that no matter what happens Jesus is always there for us. He will always love us, protect us and care for us. That night Trevor went to bed and he asked Jesus. He asked Jesus to give him the courage not to worry and the strength to give all his worries to God. And guess what kids, that's all we have to do. We just have to pray and ask God to take away all of our worries and help us get through it. And he does, he does help us. So the next time you feel worried or afraid or alone, just remember, God is always there. The scripture reading today comes from Matthew 6, 25 to 27. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they are? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that we have technology so we can connect for church like this. Thank you that we have social media so we can stay in touch with all our friends and family that aren't with us. Please be with those who are finding this experience hard. Help us to remember what you teach us in the Bible, that you're always with us and we don't need to worry about anything. Please give strength to the students and parents who are doing online school as it's not easy. Thank you that we are safe and healthy and please be with those who are not. Amen.
This morning is our last week on our series of A Practical Faith. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I always love learning about ways that we can apply our faith into the real life world, into our everyday ordinary lives. Uh, it's been so great going through the Sermon on the Mount with you all over this time. There's bits of it we haven't even covered at all, so go through and have a read of the rest of it yourself. But this morning we are talking about the topic of do not worry based on Matthew 6 verses 25 to 34. This comes right after Jesus preaches about treasures in heaven, which Brian Cray covered for us a few weeks ago. And as we unpack this verse together, I want to take you on a bit of the journey that I went on as I had to wrestle with it a bit myself. 
my initial thoughts when I started looking at this verse and particularly the title of the sermon I think I made a few assumptions really quickly and I started off expecting this to be having an angle on anxiety in terms of the mental health version of anxiety um, but have you ever tried telling someone that has anxiety oh I know how to solve your ongoing problem just don't worry let me be the first to tell you church please don't say this now I know this because worrying is my special talent. Uh, I have this very special part of my brain, let's say, that speaks up every time there's a tiny chance that something might go wrong. Now, often this part of our brains is a good thing because it keeps us safe, but sometimes mine gets a little overexcited about the warning signals. I wonder if yours does too. For example, let me tell you a few of the things that I'm really good at worrying about. Spiders that might be in my house, leeches that might be on my leg, thank you Pathfinders for that one, that my headache is probably brain cancer or any other ailment that I decide to Google, having to give a sermon when I haven't prepared anything, I can tell you I've had multiple nightmares about that one, being stuck in small spaces, falling off high spaces, and the list goes on, it's basically never ending. If you haven't watched the movie Inside Out, I highly recommend it. While it is kind of set up as mostly a cartoon that's aimed at children, it introduces us to all of these emotions that are depicted as characters inside of our brains. My favorite character is Sadness, just because she has so many great one-liners. She's so quotable. But to me, the most relatable character is Fear. And I always think about this one scene in the movie where Riley, whose brain they're all inside, starts a day at a new school and he comes into this, I guess, office space where they all live inside her brain and he dumps a pile high of papers and he says, well, I've got a list of all the worst case scenarios that could possibly happen for us on this first day of school today, including quicksand and being called on by the teacher. And then, of course, in the real life scenario, the teacher calls on Riley and asks her to introduce herself to the class and fear freaks out. And I just find that so relatable. I can very easily give you a list of all the things that could possibly go wrong. That's a special part of my brain that's really good in it. And I was thinking that when I read this verse, I thought if this verse is just telling me, oh, don't worry, it's just that easy. My initial reaction was kind of to be like, oh gee thanks, I never thought of that. If only solving our problems were that easy. But I saw this important word at the beginning of the verse in Matthew 6.25. If you want to open to it, you can stay there the whole time. We'll be going through it and back and forth with a couple other verses this morning. That important word that it starts with is therefore. And if you've heard a few of the same sermons as me, you might have this catchphrase that rings in your head every time you see the word therefore. It's there because we need to go and see what it is there for. So just before this, we know that Jesus speaks to the audience about storing up your treasures in heaven rather than here on, on, on earth. And if you haven't don't remember it or you haven't seen it yet, you can go and revisit Brian Craig's amazing sermon on that from the 3rd of July. So looking at this, I thought, okay, I don't really think this is about mental health and anxiety. So is it about money? But we kind of covered that really well in the text before. So I think that this next passage is taking that idea another step further. So let's take a closer look. So Matthew 6, starting at 25, it says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear, is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And there's more to go, but I'm gonna pause there because let's just unpack that for a second. You know, it starts off by saying, the birds do not store away in barns. And this just alludes to the treasures in heaven verses just before this section. And I think it just reminds us that 
We don't store our treasures in heaven. We take our focus away from money and we're looking to God. We're storing our lives into the everlasting. We're investing into things that last us forever. And it points out to us here that when we worry, we move our focus away from trusting in God to meet our needs. And then, you know, verse 27, it reminds us that on a very practical level, worry has no purpose of its own. And I think this worry is beyond the natural fears of what helps keep us safe. We know that that's good. This kind of worry is the kind of unchecked, untrusting worry. It only creates angst, not solutions. And I can tell you that from experience. So we know that on a practical level, this kind of worry is not good. And I think that's why God tells us, don't bother with this worry cycle, because the worry cycle, it just undoes any productivity in our lives and we when we embrace this sense of worry it just becomes a vortex that is infinitely hard to get ourselves out of and it goes on to say you know is not life more than food and body more than clothes and I think Jesus here was pushing them and pushing us to consider what is really important here verse 28 goes on and it says and why do you worry about clothes see how the flowers of the field grow they do not labor or spin yet i tell you that not even solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these if that is how god clothes the grass the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire will he not much more clothe you you of little faith now i'll be honest with you this part really challenged me it's kind of a harsh accusation when he says you have little faith because i've had these worries and you know just this worry cycle can get so wrapped up in us and i read this knowing that everyone reads this verse with their own experiences in mind and the biggest thing that stood out to me was how do i reconcile this verse with people who live in poverty and do have these worries every day and I wondered, maybe is this verse more appropriate for someone who's rich or someone who's struggling? And initially I expected a bit of an anti-consumerism message, but you know, to those who are literally worrying about these needs daily, to not worry requires such a high level of trust on God. And I think we're being challenged to trust God even when our life circumstances make it difficult to trust God. That's when it matters the most. And when we think about the audience of who Jesus was preaching this to, this was an audience full of people who, you know, what they eat, drink or wear, this was quite likely their actual daily worries. And so this was so relevant to them. And, you know, I just want to remind us that worry in itself, it's not a sin, but it is the opposite of trust. And Jesus wants to teach us a better way. You know, when Adam first sinned in the garden, a new word entered his vocabulary. He said, I was afraid. And now we continually live with fear, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of death. And fear just becomes the norm because there was an absence of love. John says, perfect love drives, drives out fear. That's 1 John 4, 18. And all of a sudden humanity's relationship with God is fractured. Therefore, we live in a world where we're constantly plagued by fear and it often interrupts this ability we have to love and receive love and trust God's love and provision for us. So I realized that maybe this is more relevant to us than it was even two years ago. Some of us have lost jobs, maybe at least cut down in hours. Some people are worried about their health and some of us might just generally be worrying a lot more than ever before. Yet God is asking us to trust him through our worries. So verse 31 says, Do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For, for the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Verse 32, it tells us the pagans, they run after, they worry about these things. And, you know, maybe they're right to worry about their lives. They don't have God. 
they don't have this hope that we have in this world and all they have is their body today and just their current situation to enjoy it in and I'm so glad we have more than today to hope in we have this hope of eternity in us verse 33 reminds us to seek God first over everything this helps us to prioritize him over the call of consumerism or wanting more and the worries of the world and verse 34 you know therefore do not worry about tomorrow tomorrow will worry about itself Jesus knows that this doesn't mean that life will be easier we just have to learn to trust that God will see us through so we're being called to focus on today and what it is that you can control and then trust that God will be there tomorrow because worry is kind of really hung up on the future it's so future focused so yes do what you can today to prepare for tomorrow but don't get so hung up on the what ifs of life it isn't productive and it takes away from seeing God in the present so yeah do what's smart for today maybe for you that means building a financial plan if money is your worry or keeping your outings COVID safe if you're worried about COVID and trusting God with the un uncontrollable what ifs of tomorrow so trusting God is the challenge here and how do we build this kind of trust we've learnt that we can't put our hope or our trust in wealth because when we realize how easily all of that stuff can get taken away even the rich people live in fear that they're going to lose their money we realize that we can only trust the one foundation that will never move god so many verses remind us of this mark 4 verse 19 says but the worries of this life the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things come in and choke the world making it unfruitful proverbs 23 verses 4 to 5 says do not weigh yourself out to get rich do not trust on your own cleverness cast but a glance at riches for they are gone and they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle he's saying invest in what is everlasting and you know proverbs 11 28 says he who trusts in riches will fall but the righteous shall flourish as the green leaf and god wants us to flourish jesus is preaching to us about all these practical ways that we can live out of faith that is going to help us flourish and i think you know we learn that faith lives beyond our circumstances look at the example of job you know job 121 says the lord gave and the lord hath taken away blessed be the name of the lord it's not always what you think right after you say that god's taken a few things away from me uh, one of my favorite yet most challenging lyrics of this song that i love called by beautiful eulogy is called if i want you to look it up if you're interested because these lyrics are amazing and it says if i have you i can lose everything and still consider it gain because i came into the world with nothing and when i leave it'll be the same <laughs> i just think wow to have that kind of faith where we recognize that nothing on earth compares to the gift of god's grace now that is trust first timothy 6 says but godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it so how do we hold trust over worry i want to leave us with five suggestions based on this passage i'm a practical person so let's get practical first of all focus on eternal matters instead of temporary ones i think developing this perspective really helps us and when we consider the therefore in verse 25 we know that eternal matters are more important than the temporary matters Matthew 6.33 reminds us, seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. That's the matter that we focus on here. Secondly, let's focus on God's providential care. Verse 26 reminds us to look at the birds of the sky. You know, they do not sow, reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Aren't you more valuable than they are? Let's think about birds for a minute now they don't have any farming strategies they don't sow or reap most of them don't store any food from one day to the next and birds need a lot of food the average bird actually needs to eat between a quarter and half of its body weight in food every day 
they use a lot of energy flying, I guess. They essentially need to find food every day or they're not going to make it through to the next night. It would seem they have a lot to worry about, but look at them, or listen to them. How often are you up at 3 or 4 a.m.? Because long before those first glimmers of light, you'll hear the birds singing joyfully. Just like the birds, our lives are a gift from our father. Imagine if they spent a lot of time worrying. Would it achieve anything? No, it would actually harm them. They'd try to carry their food around with them and they wouldn't be able to fly. They'd spend their life in their worries instead of going out in faith and looking to the father. And we can't achieving, achieve anything meaningful by worrying either. Because each day God gives us is a gift. So third, let's recognize our great value to God. Verse 26, again, it says, aren't you more valuable than they? And Romans 8, verse 31, verse 32, if we find it hard to believe that we are that valuable to God, it reminds us, it says, if God is for us, then who can be against us? Indeed, he, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, freely give us all things? Hold to that promise when, you find, when you're finding it hard. Fourth, recognize that worry is unproductive. Verse 27 told us that worry will not add an hour to your life, other translations say, or a cubit to your height. So consider what you can control that will help you and recognize that just stewing in the worry vortex isn't actually going to help at all. And lastly, focus on God's grace for today. Because verse 34 told us we know very well that each day has enough trouble of its own. We know that today we'll have trouble. The fact that Christ calls us not to worry is not based on the fact that it Believers are exempt from hardship. We're never given that promise. However, in the troubles, God promises to give us grace for the day. So on this Sabbath day, let us take off the worries of the world and hold our trust in God because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Hey church, uh, what a great service it's been today from our, our youth. Um, and, you know, this whole theme of not worrying, I love it so much. It's such a good reminder for me. And so I'm going to sing for you guys a song that's been really helpful for me on this journey. It's called Every Little Thing. And um, I love just the, the simplicity of the song and just relying on God and remembering that when God's got it all in control, which he does, every little thing is going to be all right. So I just, uh, if you know it, sing along at home and um, let's just have a moment to worship God together. Your favor waits within the future My dreams are small compared to yours What should I worry about tomorrow When I know all I've got to do is trust you, Lord Every little thing's gonna be alright Every little thing's gonna be just fine Whether I can see it now I know you will work it out for good Every little thing, everything will be alright the scenes and in the details You plan the perfect way for me Why would I dwell upon the rose uncertain tears when all I've got to do is look to you Yeah, all I've got to do Just 
joining us again this Sabbath will you pray with me to close Heavenly Father God I pray that you help us with our worries I pray that you help us take off those that burden that the worry of the world puts on us and whatever it is that's burdening us to fear and yelling at us that we need to worry about God may we just hold trust above worry help us to trust in you and to claim all of those promises in the Bible that you are enough and God, help us in those moments. Help us to reach out to others that might be worrying during this time and help us just to find peace amidst, amidst the circumstances that we're in. And may our faith go beyond anything that we find ourselves in in the moment. Help us to grow that kind of faith that we have every single day so that we can trust in you. Amen. Hi, church. Thank you for joining us today. We really hope you enjoyed the service. Thank you, Pastor Jess, for your wonderful message. We all really enjoyed it. Don't forget to join us this afternoon for our closing Sabbath, which the details are on the church's Facebook page. I have some discussion questions for us today. Question one. How do you reconcile this passage with the poverty in the world? Question two. What is the difference between concern and worry? Question three. In what ways have you experienced the harm of worry physically, spiritually, and mentally? Question four. What types of social justice issues is God calling you to get involved in and how? And lastly, question five. How has God kept you dependent as you waited on his direction and provisions? Thank you again for joining us and we hope to see you next week on castlehill.sda.online.church or on YouTube. Don't forget to share with friends and families as we would love to share the word of God with many other people. Have a great afternoon. Nice to see you all. We've just been for a ride and uh, I just want to encourage you all to do as much exercise as you can during the lockdown. It's a lot of fun. Earlier on in the day we played some games together for family time. Just try and invest in each other and do things. And always remember, let's keep on caring for each other. Ring someone at church, send them an email, uh, a text message and uh, let's stay in contact. I know some people haven't been well of late and there's been some birthdays. But uh, we look forward to all getting back together sometime soon. Good to see you. Let's all wave goodbye and stay healthy and well and uh, walk, run, ride, whatever you can do to get outdoors. God bless. Bye.